Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is a foundation review on the Zoeva Authentic Skin Natural Luminous Foundation. I know what you're thinking. Luminous Foundation, Oily Combo Skin. These two things do not normally go together. No, they don't. But this Oily Combo Skin is also 45, very nearly 46 years old, so it needs to find foundations which won't make me look like I've been dug up from a sarcophagus from about 3000 years BC. So, if you want to find out just exactly how well this foundation performs on my skin, then my friend you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey! Welcome back from the intro. Right, it has been a while since I have done a foundation review. So you're going to have to forgive me if I go a little bit slow and cock up a couple of times, basically. Uh, because, as I said, it's been a while. Now, I will have shown you this in the intro. This is the Zoeva Authentic Skin Natural Luminous Foundation. Um, inspired by Zoe's vision that every woman should feel comfortable, beautiful and confident. Authentic Skin Natural Luminous Foundation was designed to allow you to build your perfect coverage whenever and wherever you feel you need it. Enhanced with the nurturing power of rosehip oil, it glides on to give a smooth and weightless finish, allowing your skin's natural luminosity to shine through. What I like about this is that instead of giving it names like linen, porcelain, asparagus, uh, I don't know where asparagus came from. It's got names that are inspirational or aspirational. For example, I've gone for shade 030N for neutral. Ambition. I actually love that idea. Because it always bugs me. Lighter shades are things like linen, porcelain, natural beige. Ivory. Why are the deeper shades always named after foods? Nutmeg, cinnamon, chocolate. You get the occasional ebony thrown in, but it's usually named after food. I never have understood that. Anyway, <laughs> nice glass bottle, pump. Now, the way that I do my foundation reviews has changed. I always used to just do first impression with you. Now I actually try and wear the foundation for a bit first under different circumstances just so that I can give you a better indication of wear time and how it's give you a more rounded review basically. Um, I have found that this actually applies best with a sponge. This is one of those fuzzy sponges. One of those fluffy ones. Um, so that's what I should be using to apply it with today. And I will, I have my, as ever, my Pokemon phone case with Bellbetter, who is my favourite Pokemon. Uh, let's get you zoomed in just a fraction. Not as far as I do when I'm doing my eyes, but just there we go. Okay. There we go. Let's not leave the double chin it out. Right. So that you can see the consistency, as you can see. Kind of double creamish. 
face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I used a combination of my W7 Princess Potion, which is the dupe for the Fasali Unicorn Essence, the pink one. It's just a really nice light moisturiser to put on because I put my moisturiser and my SPF on and let all that soak in. I then like to just put a little something on just to give my skin a bit of bounce. And then obviously my antiperspirant primer because without that nothing stays on my face for long. More details about that are in the film listed below. So, let's start applying. Now, I always used to go, because I've got oily combo skin, I always used to go for full on matte, full coverage long lasting foundations but I'm 45 years old I'll be 46 in a few months time and I've just had to accept that full coverage foundations are not necessarily my friend shall we say um, They, uh, they tend to sit in areas that we don't want them to sit in. As I said, I have tried applying this with a brush, a, well, different types of brushes. I tried a, a flat top kabuki style brush, I tried one of the toothbrush style ones, like the Artiste brushes. Um, I tried the Jeffrey brush from his Morphe his foundation brush from his Morphe brush set and I tried uh, using a duo fibre one as well. I tried ordinary sponges, so I tried fluffy sponges and I found that sponges were absolutely, for me at least, it gave me the coverage that I wanted. Obviously you get slightly higher coverage if you use a brush because a sponge will shear the coverage out a tad although obviously these fluffy sponges shear it out much less than ordinary sponges do they soak in much less of the product but you can see this is applied really nicely it's building up in the areas that I need it to and it is indeed luminous. I haven't noticed that this oxidises much during the day. It does dry down slightly darker, but then all foundations do as a rule. And the difference between uh, a dry down and oxidising is that the dry down happens within the first sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. If it continues to get darker after half an hour, then the product is oxidising. But the first sort of 20 minutes, half an hour is just the product setting. And you can, I mean, that feels so light on my skin. I probably could have got away with just the one pump. I mean, you can see there's still a fair bit on that. I just, I automatically pump out two. I always forget that I use less with the fluffy sponge. So, that's probably a, a pump and maybe a quarter. That's done my entire face, which is pretty damn good, it has to be said. Uh, I'm going to try out this Beauty Bakery Cake Face concealer today. This is their lightest one in Mug Life. A lot of people have moaned because it's very yellow based. Because they're like, oh, but I'm cool toned. I'm neutral to cool. Um, but I actually find that a more yellow toned concealer, certainly on dark circles, 
is more effective because obviously zoom you in so you can see what I'm doing because obviously yellow is opposite on the wheel to purple so if you've got bluey purple dark circles like I get a yellow toned concealer can actually be a blessing because it saves you having to colour correct first not that I, I colour correct very often, I used to, I have got the uh, Revolution Peach um, concealer or colour corrector from there concealer and define range but to be honest um, I tend to only use that on days when I'm just doing like no makeup makeup because I find that sort of it cancels out the darkness without looking like you've piled a huge amount of concealer on. Uh, this is actually one of the Jeffrey Morphe brushes. This is the JS3. Um, I have two of them because I find that these are really really good for uh, the under eye. So I keep one for spreading the powder out one for spreading the concealer out and then a separate one for the powder. I'm going in with my usual Coty Airspun Translucent Extra Coverage. I never used to include these steps, I just used to show you applying the foundation um, and then tell you how well products applied over the top but I did get requests to actually show these stages so I will include it in future I also like to use this brush for really getting in and setting the marionette lines try and stop them from creasing too much and I also like to use a brush quite a densely packed brush like this to initially press the powder onto my nose into the hulk and into the line there uh, just because I find that it, it helps to hold the foundation on my nose for longer because my nose is the place that hates foundation the most. And then I'm going in with this big old floofy brush. Can you see the... And I'm going to use this. I know people are going to be saying, you've got a luminous foundation, what on earth are you setting it for? Well, because if I don't, it won't be on my face in about 20 minutes time and after about an hour or so once the powder's settled into my skin um, the natural luminosity comes back through anyway so it's not really that much of an issue now my favourite bronzer is by far the butter bronzer but I have got some new ones to try I finally managed to pick up an hourglass bronzer in luminous bronze light so I thought I'd have a go with this one now I don't tend to contour so I stick my bronzer where you would normally contour because normally this is where you would contour and then your bronzer you would put on the high points of the face where the sun would catch it but I prefer to use a bronzer just to help 
warm my skin up. I'm just pinching the brush to make it a bit flatter. Just add a little bit of something down the side of my nose. And then let's not forget the double chin inch. And along the jawline. And then if you hold. I actually treated myself, I say treated, I got it off of Depop, so I didn't treat myself, treat myself, but got the Hourglass Ghost Quad of brushes, and I'm going to go in with, uh, I think, this one here, which is Strobe Blush Brilliant Nude. Now, these are actually reasonably difficult to get a brush into and just choose the one but I have found this JS20 brush from the Geoffrey Morphe set is perfect perfect size just to get in and just hit the the one shade I very often will just use a big, bl big brush and um, Go over all four. A little bit across the nose. Continue under the chinage. Under the chinage. For the time being, I'm keeping it in its box because it cost me a lot of money keeping it all. Um, and then I'm just going to go over with a big old fluffy brush with the ambient lighting powder in dim light which is um, I really like finishing off with this because it just sort of it's like kind of soft it, it, it has a blurring effect it kind of blends all of the powders in together and you don't need to use much but there we go so let's get a zoom in and have a bit of a close-up look at this foundation when it's freshly applied. So you can see, not collecting in pores or anything. Yes, I have visitors on my chin. But it's not much longer I'm going to start charging them a rent. Right, okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, disappear off and finish my face and then I will be back to give you um, a look at what it's like once it's all done with the setting spray. It's currently one o'clock so we'll call that our check-in time. See you in a minute. Well, in a minute for me but it'll be instant for you. Hey, right, okay, I am back. Uh, it's now... 25 past 1, um, obviously I finished off the eye look, added some highlight, setting spray, yada yada yada. So, as expected after 25 minutes, it's still looking fabulous darling. Um, I will check in with you, I usually try and check in round about the 4 or 5 hour mark. So kind of halfway through a working day when you could potentially get to the powder room and sort anything out that needs sorting out. What I do on my foundation reviews though is I don't do anything to the foundation. The lipstick may have worn off, I may touch that up, uh, but the foundation itself I don't touch. I don't blot, I don't add more powder, I don't touch up anything at all. Um, and I normally tend to do the last check-in sometime between 8, 10, 12 hours to give you an idea that if you are say at a conference where you don't get time to go and make repairs it'll give you an idea of how the foundation will wear on at least my skin in that length of time. So uh, I have now got at least four hours to wait before I can talk to you again, so uh, 
best I go get some editing done, otherwise uh, the, the film won't be up tomorrow like it's meant to be. Oops. Right, I'll see you in four hours. You will see me instantly. Hey, welcome back for the first check-in. I got hot, so I pushed my hair up. Uh, but as promised, I have done absolutely nothing to my foundation. I have literally just topped up my lipstick because I'd had a cup of coffee and uh, had a bit of an issue. So, it is now just gone five o'clock. This has been on for four hours, so assuming you started work, four hours is usually about the time, sort of middle of your day-ish. So, let's have a zoom in and see how it's looking. Now, bearing in mind that I have oily combo skin and I have not done any powdering or any blotting at all, it's actually doing really well at not having my oils break through. Uh, it's not really settling too deeply into the hulk as of yet. Or my Grand Canyon there. It still looks nice and hydrated under the eyes. Isn't splitting around the nose here. And I I always lose foundation off the end of my nose because I'm constantly doing this, it's a nervous habit. I'm hoping that when I get my nose pierced here, to be that will hurt and it will stop me from doing that and then I can keep foundation on my nose. Uh, so ignore the tip of the nose there, but it's not sort of disappearing off of the sides here. It hasn't settled too badly in the marionette lines. It's gone a bit crusty over the... Um, visitors um, but that's only to be expected really so blush bronze highlight still all where it should be so so far for a natural luminous foundation this is holding up extremely well um, and this is how it has performed on me when I've worn it um, on previous occasions, uh, including um, New Year's Eve. Uh, it, as you can see, the the luminosity has, after I'd sprayed it with, I actually used my Gerard Slay All Day in Rose today. This is the one that's um, done in collaboration with Nakia Joy, the Australian. Australian um, beauty YouTuber. Speaking of Australia, if you can spare any money at all, please donate to the Australian Red Cross. Um, these wildfires are a nightmare, not just for the people living there and the firefighters risking their lives every day to battle it, but also. I think I saw a statistic this morning that about 5,000 koalas had died. Um, there's a lot of Australia alight right now, so if you do have any spare cash, please, please, please donate it to the Australian Red Cross or any of the, um, the fundraising things that you see that are designed specifically to go towards aiding them at the moment. Um, I noticed this morning that Twitter has just said that it is starting to rain in parts of Australia so hopefully that will help. Um, but yeah, how did I get onto this? Oh, setting spray. Yeah, after I put the setting spray on, um, you can see it kind of melted all the powders into each other. It really helps with this hourglass powder. I love I can understand now why people use finishing powders because it really does finish the look off. It blends everything together nicely. Then when you put your setting spray on it all kind of melts back in and you you don't get a, the, the dusty sort of look you can get when you've put a matte powder on. Um, you can see the natural luminosity has come back but it's also doing extremely well keeping my oils under control 
um, I mean I'm getting absolutely no transfer at all when I touch my face which is awesome um, so yeah so far so good on the four hour mark I will now continue editing and I'll be back probably probably around about nine o'clock which would be about the eight hours because um, I'm in an awful lot of pain and I'm not sure I can last out much beyond then so um, I will see you in another four hours you will see me instantly for the final check-in but as you can see certainly for sort of four hours this is looking really really good um, the only place the only the only areas that look different when I first applied it is the, the end of my nose but that's me doing this all the time and it's gone a little bit crusty on those three spots that I've got there but then you know that always happens it's yeah, it happens it's, it's to be expected um, the wonders of hormonal outbreaks because of stress <sighs> anyway see you now hey welcome back to the final check in the little down diddle it dead down it's been a while since I've done that right it is just gone nine o'clock I'm in a lot of pain <laughs> need to take this off my face so before I do it's been on for eight hours let's have a zoom in see how it's going As you can see, there's still no settling in the Hulk or the Grand Canyon. Starting to get a little bit of settling in there, but nothing major. Still nice and hydrated under the eyes. Losing a little bit of coverage around the sides of the nose now, but it's fading very gracefully. Marionette line's not looking too bad chin very crusted and busted and yes I got my lipstick on my chin when I was eating don't ask so can't really can't really tell by the chin because I did try and wipe the lipstick off and so we'll just ignore that bit there um, but as you can see plain to the face everything's still where it should be so what are my final thoughts on so over authentic skin. Now obviously I've used this quite a few times now so this is not a first impression. I really really like this particular foundation. It's very lightweight as you saw for the first sort of four hours there was no real breakdown at all. Just the end of my nose where I do that as a nervous habit. This lasts so well on my skin it's ridiculous um, I've not had to blot all day and yet I'm not looking ridiculously oily or ridiculously shiny so it doesn't say that it's got all controlling properties in it and from the ingredients there's nothing on there that, that looks like it should have anything that in there that will control the oils um, whether it's the rose hip oil on there I'm not sure because a lot of people don't realize the reason their skin's greasy and oily is because it's too dry so the skin is producing more oils so the, the, the better you look after your skin the less your oils will break through allegedly um, this works by far, it's one of the best ones for controlling my oils and for looking skin like and for fading very very gracefully so I absolutely love 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 this would definitely recommend it um, if you're in the market for a luminous foundation and you want one that will work on older skin without settling into the lines too much. Um, 
I would imagine on a younger skin that would look even more beautiful than it does on mine. But you can see, I mean, certainly if you were chatting distance apart, this looks as good as it did first thing this morning. Um, the places that it's worn, it has worn very gracefully. And as I said, I haven't had, I haven't blotted, I haven't added more powder, I haven't added more setting spray, I haven't done anything to my face all day, except touch my lipstick up earlier on, which obviously I'm not doing now because I'm about to take it all off and go to bed. Um, I really, really like that foundation. It's one of the few luminous foundations that actually works on my skin and will actually give me a full day's wear. Um, prior to this, really the only sort of luminous one that, that I could put on and know it would look good for at least sort of six, seven, eight hours was the Too Faced Peach Perfect. Um, and if you have an issue with fragrances in your makeup, you would struggle with that because it is very highly scented with peach. The Zoeva one just smells like perf uh, smells like foundation to me, so I didn't notice any additional perfumes in there at all. Um, and you can see that you know the the bronze, the blush, and the highlight haven't faded at all through the day, so it holds on to your powder products extremely well. I really, really rate that foundation. That is absolutely in my top ten, probably my top five foundations. So, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you did, give us a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried this foundation? Are you now interested to try this foundation since you've watched this review? Um, I'd be interested to know what you think. If this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome, hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've got a lot of other films you could go and watch. You could go and watch this eye look, for example. Um, and I've got a whole folder of Just Foundation reviews, so if you want to check out which other foundations I have already reviewed and have got um, recommendations or <laughs> leave my loans, then um, feel free to shoot across and binge that playlist. It would be lovely if you'd like to join the 4F family by hitting the subscribe button and then the notification bell and joining the friendliest family on YouTube. Right, I can feel a... I can feel a yawn trying to escape. Beetlejuice, the minute you mention it, boom, there it is. So, I'm going to bid you all a very good day, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time it is, in whatever part of the world this film catches you. And I will say, as ever, you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Let's try that again without a yawn. <laughs> Bye for now. I hate yawning at you. Anyway, it it is what it is. See you in a... You, see, you've got to watch another film now just to prove that I don't yawn in all of them. <laughs> see you soon.